All right, welcome to the Unit 5 ABC test review. Let's get started. So we're going to simplify this radical. We're going to break down the 32 and the 16 and 2. You could have stopped here. at 16 is the perfect square. Otherwise, you break it down. Here you could have stopped. You had a pair of 4s. If you didn't, you could keep going. And here you'd see that there are 5 2s. It's a square root, so we're going to have pairs. How many pairs can you bring out? The negative 3 is going to come down, pair is going to, a 2 is going to come down, another pair of 2s, and you're multiplying these. m to the 5th, that are our 5m's, and um, pairs, pairs, each pair, 1 is going to come out. We have n, there's no, no pairs there. p to the 7th, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 p's. Pair of them up. And you have three p's that come out. And now let's look at what's left inside the square root. We have a 2 that's left over, an m, an n, and a p. So 2, m, n, p. And it's all multiplied. We just write them next to each other. You don't need the little dots. 3, negative 3 times 2 times 2 is negative 12. m times m is m squared. p times p times p is p cubed. Square root of 2 m n p. Number 2. Let's break that down. 378 is, that ends in an even number, so it's 2 and 189. 189 is 7 and 27. I did this prior to. And 3 and 3. Looking at, it's a cube root. Cube root means we need groups of three. So there's three threes here. So that's seven from the front is coming out. So seven, let's keep it out, times the three from the grouping. V, we only have the one V, so that's gonna stay inside. And what's left over? Cube root of seven, two, and seven. So two times seven. And don't let's not forget that V that's here. That stays inside. Simplifying, we get 21 cube root of 14v. There's your final answer. All right, number three. So we got to be careful with this one. This one says equivalent to. It's not simplified, but equivalent to. So we simplify some of it, like the 81, 9 and 9. It's a fourth root, so we need to keep breaking it down. Groups of four threes. So that's going to be a three that comes out. Now, a lot of you are going to look to try to simplify, like we have the x's that won't simplify, the y's will simplify. But if we look at our answer choices, they're in exponential form. You see exponents. So with those exponents, really what we're going to do is we're going to convert the rest to exponential form. So we have our numerator, it becomes your, or your exponent becomes your numerator for underneath the radical. So it's x to the 1 over 4. And it's y to the 7 over 4. So that's just exponential form, which is b. These are equivalent. This is not simplified. 7 divided by 4 does simplify, but um, this is equivalent. Number 4. Break the 32 down. That's 16 and 2, 4 and 4, 2 and 2, 2 and 2. Group it, 2 comes out, we have 5 x's, groups of 3, so an x is going to come out, the x squared is going to stay inside because there's 2 x's left, y to the 8th, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, groups of 3, you could also do 8 divided by 3, there's 2 full y's that are going to come out, so that's y squared, and what's left is y times y, which is going to be inside. And we also have the pair of twos that we did not use up. Those pair will come out. Stay inside. Two times two is four. And there's your final answer. On B, for B, we are simplifying when you add or subtract radicals. At any point, if you ever see that you can simplify a radical, you always can. So right now, I'm going to simplify the 27 and 9 and 3, 3 and 3. 
Square root means pairs, so I've got a pair of threes. Don't forget that three to bring it down. Times the three here. Square root of three. Can't break down the two. That's kind of going to simplify. Break down the 18. That's nine and two. Three and three. We have a group of pairs. So that's going to come out. So it's going to be negative three. And then square root of two is left over. I'm going to simplify the outside. So three times three is nine. Square root of three minus one square root of two, or just square root of two, minus three square root of two. I guess I could have simplified these. We have square root of 2 and a square root of 2. Those are your like terms. We have a negative 1 square root of 2, and we're subtracting 3 more square roots of 2. Total, we have a negative 4 square root of 2. Next one, simplify. We can actually, so you could do exactly what I was doing before, simplify each one like this. But right away, I actually, on this one, I see that I have a cube root of 16 and another cube root of 16. So I'm going to join those two together. So we have negative 2 cube roots of 16. We're subtracting 3. And that's going to become a negative 5 cube root of 16. And now I'm going to simplify. You could have simplified before, but it doesn't matter when you do it. You just got to do it at some point. So then 3 is going to come out, so it'll be negative 3, cube root of 2, minus, and let's simplify this, 16, 8 and 2, 4 and 2, 2 and 2. The 2 is going to, oh, wait a second, the 5 has got to come down, times the 2 from the grouping, and then there'll be a 2 left over. I'm just going to rewrite what I have. I'm going to multiply the 5 times 2 is 10. And now I look and I have actually have like, we have like terms. We have cube root, cube root of two and another cube root of two. Putting those together, we have negative three cube roots of two minus 10 more. That's a negative 13 cube roots of two. There's your final answer. That's simplified down pretty nicely. Number seven. I don't see any like terms. It's close, but the 50 and eight means they're not like terms. They're not the same. So I'm gonna simplify. So it's 25 and two. That is your perfect squares, 25. You can keep breaking it down though if you'd like. You get a pair of fives, that'll come out. X to the fifth is one, two, three, four, five. Five divided by two is, there's gonna be two groups, so that's gonna be X times X is X squared. Then what's left inside is a two and an X. And we're gonna subtract, break down that eight, it's four and two, two and two. Grouping. Now you have 2, x to the 5th, again, that's just the same as this right here. We have x squared, leaving inside a 2x. Well, let's look at what we got here. We have x squared, square root of 2x, x squared, square root of 2x. All the variables and the exponents all match up, and the radicals. So you have 5 of them, subtract 2, you get 3 x squared, square root of two x's. And the last one for this page. I'm gonna look to, well, let's see, I have some like terms here already. So let's put those together. We have five fourth roots of five. It doesn't matter where I write it, I'm gonna write it at the beginning. Minus the fourth root of 80. Let's simplify this 80, 16 and five. Four and four, two and two. So we have a lot of prime numbers here. You have groups of four. So that pair grouping of two will come out two. That subtraction came from up here. A fourth root of five. We have five fourth roots of five, and we're subtracting two fourth roots of five. I ran out of room. Let's go right over here. It's going to be three fourth roots of five plus two fourth roots of four. Hopefully that matches up with someone, something. D. All right, moving on. Multiplications. For the multiplication, the only rule is you multiply the outsides of the radicals. 
Multiply the insides of the radicals. There's no like terms, anything with multiplication. So 5 times 3 is 15. And 10 times 12 is 120. K times K to the fifth is K to the sixth. Simplify. As you multiply, you simplify. So 12 times 10, 6 times 2, 3 times 2, 5 times 2. So let me look at where my prime numbers are. It's a square root, so I'm going to look for pairs. Looks like I just have one pair of twos that's going to come out, so that's 15 times 2. K to the 6. Those of you that love my Ks, here they are, all six of them. Grouping, grouping, grouping of two pairs, groups of two. There's three, so it's going to be K to the 3rd on the outside. And what's left on the inside is a 3, a 5, and a 2. Multiply those together, and that will be 30. So we have a 30k to the third on the outside, square to 30. Done. All right, number 10. So I'm going to be a little more careful here. We have a monomial, and we're multiplying it by a binomial. So I have multiply the first two, so two times with multiplication of ration, radicals, you multiply the outside, so two times negative five is negative 10. Multiply the inside, six times six K is 36 K. And I'll multiply the next two, so it's gonna be a positive four, so two times two is four. Multiply the insides of the radicals, six times two K is 12 K. So that's, Distributed, now after you multiply, you always simplify. So 36 is 6 and 6, so you could have stopped there. 3 and 2, 3 and 2. So you got your pairs of 2s, pairs of 3s. So that negative 10 times 2 times 3. And then the K is going to stay inside since there's no pair with it. Grouping, that's going to come outside with 4 Four comes down times two square root of three k. Negative ten times two times three is negative sixty square root of k plus eight square root of three k. Those look like they're going to be like terms. They're not. This is just a k, and this is three k. So they are not like terms. All right, number eleven. So this square, you uncover it, that square here means times itself, the base. So the whole base. So this is really gonna mean two cube root, or square root of three x to the fifth minus two square root of y times itself. So when we multiply these out, we have multiply the first two numbers, so two times two is four. Multiply the inside of the square root, so that's three times three is nine. X to the fifth times X to the fifth is X to the tenth. So add those exponents when you're multiplying like bases. Multiply two times negative two is negative four. Square root of three X to the fifth Y. Let's multiply the now distribute this second term of the first binomial. So negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Square root of 3x to the fifth y. Multiply the last two. Negative 2 times 2 is positive 4. Square root of y squared. After you multiply, you should simplify. So we're going to simplify each term, each term term we have 9 is square root of 9 is 3 so that's 4 times 3 square root of x to the 10th is x to the 5th 5 groupings on the middle terms you can do more you can do two things they are like terms you can join them together right away or you can simplify I see that we have x to the 5th on both of them so we're, I'm going to simplify those it really does not matter which way you do it uh, so we have an x squared that comes out square root of 3xy inside Again, on the next one, it's the exact same thing. On the last term, we have the square root of y squared, which is just y. So that's going to come 4y. Now I'm going to join my like terms in the middle. We have x squared 
square root of 3y, x squared, 3 square root of 3y. All the variables, exponents, everything match up. You get negative 4 minus 4 is a negative 8. At the beginning here, I have 4 times 3 is 12. So 12x to the fifth. A negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8 x squared, square root of 3xy, plus 4y. No other like terms. Put that together, and there is your answer if I had this 5 gone. So it would be A. All right, number 12. Same exact concept as number 11, just simpler. There's no variables, so it's the same concept. 6 times 5 is 30. 6 times the square root of 5 is 6 square root of 5. Square root of 5 times 5 is 5 square root of 5. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 25. Simplify everything. We have like terms. So 36, we have 6 square roots of 5, and we add 5 more square roots of 5. We have 11 square roots of 5 left. Square root of 25 and ends up being 5. Well, we have like terms still. So 30 plus 5 is 35 plus 11 square root of 5. Sweet. All right, moving on, last three. Thanks for sticking with me. We have number 13. Looking at the denominator as a monomial. Monomial means we multiply by the index, meaning like it's a square root, so we need two of them total. We have one square root of 5 here, so we're going to multiply by another square root of 5. And what that's going to do in the denominator, it's going to actually simplify you have 5 times 5 underneath is going to be 25. And the square root of 25 equals, I'm just working with the denominator, square root of 25 is 5. In the numerator, we need to multiply by the square root of 5 also because what we're multiplying by has to be equivalent to 1. This is the square root of 5 divided by square root of 5 is 1. So we are actually multiplying by 1. Now we have a binomial in the numerator. So we need to distribute this monomial to each term. So that's 3 square root of 2 times the square root of 5 is 3 square root of 10. Square root of 5 times 3 square root of 3. That's going to become a 3 square root of 15. Looking to simplify. Square root of 10 I can't simplify. That's just 5 and 2, so there's no pairs that come out of that. It's 15, same thing. 5 times 3, you know what, nothing to simplify. We're going to keep going, though. I'm going to simplify that 3 times 5. So I'm going to rewrite it. I've learned that just rewriting a problem can actually unlock your brains to understand what our next step is. At this point, there's no like terms, but we have our coefficients on each term. 3, 3, and 15 are all divisible by 3, so we divide each term by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So our final answer, you have 1 times the square root of 10 is the square root of 10. We don't write the 1. 1 times the square root of 15 is the square root of 15. Ooh, that's a weird looking 5. And in the denominator, you have 5. Remember, don't... You don't simplify underneath the radical. That is not a 10. That's a square root of 10. If you put that in a calculator, it's like 3 point, uh, 1 point, 3 point something, 3 point, it's a decimal, 3.1 something. 15, square root of 15 is 3.9 something. It's not 15, so we cannot simplify that any further. All right, number 14. Stay with me here. This one's going to be a little longer. It's a cube root. Look at our denominators. We have a cube root. Cube root means we need three of those. It's a, again, it's a monomial. So it's a monomial. So we're going to look at cube root of 5v times the cube root of 5v in the denominator. And what that's going to do is we have one, two, three of them. So it will simplify it. There'll be no more cube root left. When we multiply those denominators, we have 2 times 5 times 5 times 5 is 125. V times V times V is V to the third. That's our denominator, which if you keep going with just the denominator, I know we have stuff to do with the numerator, but I'm just going to keep going with the denominator because let's do it. Cube root of 125 is 5. Cube root of V to the third is V. The denominator is 10V. That's awesome. The denominator doesn't have a radical anymore. Now we just got to figure out this numerator, and we're done. 
in the numerator. We also need to multiply by the exact same thing as we did in the denominator. Unfortunately, the numerator is not quite as easy because we have this binomial here. In the denominator, it was just had a monomial. So with multiplying monomials, it was a little bit simpler. When we're distributing, so we're going to distribute both of these cube roots of 5Vs. We're going to distribute them to both the terms over on the left on the binomial. Now when we do this, it's going to be hard to distribute both monomials. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to join those together first. And if you join them together, multiply them, 5 times 5 is 25, v times v is v squared. And now I'm going to distribute that to each term. That's going to be much easier. So we don't, so on the outside it'll be 5 cube root 25 times, 25 v to the squared times v squared is 25 v to the fourth. Distributing again, we have the 4v squared is on the outside, that was a coefficient, and we have a cube root of 25v squared. So now it's all multiplied out. Now I'm just looking over what we have on the left. So we have the cube root of 25v to the fourth. Can I simplify anything there? And the answer is yes, actually the v to the fourth. You can simplify that with, it's going to become, let me write this in a different color so you can see it a little bit better. The 5 is going to come out, the 5 that's right here, that's going to come out. The v to the 4th, when you simplify the cube root, that's going to become v on the outside, left over with a 25 v on the inside. On our next, so let me erase this because I don't have enough room. On our next term, the 4v squared, Square, cube root of 25, that's only 5 and 5. That can't be simplified. The v squared, there's only 2. I need 3 with a cube root, so that cannot be simplified. So that's just 25v squared. Now, let me rewrite what I got going on here. In the numerator, I'm just going to rewrite it. There's nothing actually going on there at all that I can do. Two times five is ten. Now, this is one, the area that we can do something. We have a v next to our coefficient. Another, well, that's a v squared next to that coefficient and of our term. And our last term, the ten v. Those all three can be divided by v. You can take out. It's always the least of the exponents. So we will divide them all by v. V divided by v is one. V divided by V squared divided by V. Think about it. V squared divided by V is V. And V divided by V is 1. Let's clean up what we got here. 5 times 1 is 5. Cube root 25V plus 4 times V is 4V. Four, Cube root 25V squared. Those aren't like terms because we have a v squared and a v, and so they're not the same. 10 times 1 is 10. Let's see what our answers are. See if I can match this up. Oh, no. It's not matching up the same. So these should be 25s. Of course they should. So it should have been D. All right, number 15, last problem. Thanks for staying with me. We have a square root in the denominator. It's a monomial. So with this, we are going to multiply by just one more of the radicals, the square roots. In the denominator, that's going to become 25n to the fourth. You add the exponents. In the numerator, we need to also multiply by the exact same thing we multiplied in the denominator. 5 times 6 is 30. n squared times n squared is n to the fourth. 30 breaks down into 3 and 10. Two and, oh, man, they don't, that doesn't simplify. N to the fourth, though, does. That will be N squared. And 25 in the denominator, square root of 25 is 5. Square root of N to the fourth is N squared. If you're not understanding that, 
square root of n to the fourth, there's one, two, three, four n's. Square root means you got your pairs, so each n comes out, and that'll be n squared. So that's where that comes from. After you simplify the radicals, then we look to, can we simplify the outsides of the radicals, the variables, or the constants? And this uh, constant is just the numbers. We have n squared divided by n squared. Those will cancel. They'll simplify. Don't tell your teacher I've ever I say that. And we get 30 over 5 as your answer. Square root of 30 over 5. There we go. All right. Thanks for watching. Please email.